morning. Hello everybody. Welcome to Mindful Tree Painting. So today we're going to do two watercolour trees in an hour. It is possible. We're going to do a wintry tree and then a summery tree and just three colours. So it's good colour mixing as well. But first I thought we ought to get into the into the zone with a breathing exercise. So I've just got a flip flip squeak speak properly that would be good if I could do that and uh, flip screens to that and leave that turn my microphone off and I'll let you listen to the exercise and follow the instructions so it might be a bit quiet in the room but you should be all right online the water droplets are quite loud it might startle you if you're already relaxed Welcome to this short breath awareness practice. To start, make sure you're comfortable sitting or lying down and bring your attention to your breathing. We're going to start the practice with some deep abdominal breathing. So take a deep breath and on the inhale feel your belly rise and on the exhale feel it fall intentionally move your breath into your belly space rather than your chest space allowing you to take longer, deeper breath. This kind of diaphragmatic breathing is the breathing associated with calm and refreshment. So let's take a few more moments here, focusing on deep abdominal breathing. If it will help you, you can bring both your hands onto your belly with your fingertips pointing towards each other. On every inhale, your hands should be pointing apart and on every exhale, they will come back together. Breathe in and deep breath out. Breath in, and deep breath out. Continue with this pattern of deep breathing in your own time. And start to notice how this type of breathing moves your body. as well as the rise and fall of your belly, what else do you notice? Perhaps movement in your shoulders, perhaps movement in your hips. You're not trying to change or adjust anything and you're not trying to change, you're just bringing your awareness to how this kind of breathing affects your body. Just take a few more deep abdominal breaths. now 
start to breathe normally. You're not trying to manipulate your breath. You're not trying to control it. You're just breathing as you normally would. As you do this, notice how your breath moves your body this time. Notice how it's different from the abdominal breathing. Perhaps your chest moves a little bit more. Maybe your shoulders move more. Again, you're not trying to change anything just becoming aware of these movements. And now, move your attention away from your body and start to follow the air. See if you can notice a cool sensation on your top lip as you breathe in. Follow the breath all the way down into your lungs and then follow it back up. See if you can notice a warm sensation on your lip as you breathe out. Follow the air in all the way down to the bottom of your lungs and follow it as it comes back out. Continue this process of following your breath, becoming fully present and aware of the process of breathing. Following the breath, noticing the sensations that it creates in your body along the way. Take some time to focus on this breath awareness. It's totally natural that your thoughts will wander as you do this exercise. And it's okay. It's normal. Whenever this happens, just gently bring your focus back to your breath. Still following the breath. And now let's practice the same way that we started. As we end this practice. By taking large abdominal breaths. So deep inhales deep exhales deep inhale deep exhale one more Deep inhale, and exhale. And now you can begin to expand your awareness. Maybe bring some movement into your body. And now when you're ready, open your eyes and blink them. Try to carry this awareness with you as you go back out into your day.
nice way to start, isn't it? Just to keep very calm and mindful. So throughout this session, if you get thoughts that come into your mind, they will. And that's okay. Just acknowledge them. If they're important thoughts, acknowledge them, shelve them in your mind, and then bring your focus back to the task at hand today, which is tree painting. So being mindful just means being present, fully present in whatever it is that you're doing. You could have a mindful shower, you can have a mindful bath, a mindful meal, and this morning it's a mindful painting. So we'll do two trees. If you imagine, so I've got my paper uh, landscape, and if you imagine an imaginary line in the middle, um, the left hand side will do a winter tree, and the right hand side will do a summery tree. We've got a selection of brushes to use, and only three colours. I didn't want to confuse you with lots of colours, so um, I thought this would be a, a nice way to start. So I'm going to go with my big brush. This is a, a wash brush, so you can do it with me. I'm going to give it a little bit of a, a wet in my water jar. Because we're using watercolours, it need, water is the key. It, the clue's in the name. So I've got it nice and wet, and I'm going to make a tree colour, because we're doing a winter tree. The brown isn't enough. It's quite orange. So we'll, we'll scoop a dollop of brown. And then we'll add a little bit of blue. So the paint needs to be like ink. So the blue will make the brown go darker. And then just add a tiny little bit of yellow. So it goes a sort of greeny, browny, grey, sludgy colour. I, I need to invent a colour term for this. I could, I suppose, tree bark. And we'll keep with these brushes because they've got a good point. So we're going to work on the left hand side and we're just going to paint a capital Y without a lot of pressure. So your paint needs to be quite fluid and if you notice on my page I've got space all the way around it. You could even drop it a little bit lower than that on your paper. So you want your paint if it's not very fluid, just add some more water. So all deciduous trees, you know, leaves, uh, trees that lose their leaves, will have a capital Y shape in there somewhere. Some might be long and thin, some might be short and fat, some might be stacked wise, but it's difficult to notice in this time of year because it's so... Uh, full of foliage but as the leaves fall in a couple of months time you'll notice the capital Y shapes so what we want to do is we then add a little bit more paint and pressure to thicken the base of that Y and then we'll flick out on both sides And that forms the roots as well. So you can keep dipping your brush back into your brown paint. Now these, these brushes, we could possibly do the whole tree with just this one. If you find as we get finer, um, you want to go with a thinner brush, then that is more than okay. Because what we want to do is... Um, on the left arm of the Y, we're going to extend it and brush outwards to paint another Y or V shape. And we always brush, we start from the body of the tree and brush away. 
because our lines will naturally get thinner and more tapered as we uh, move the brush away. It is a bit of a skill, but really useful to acquire. And we do exactly the same with the other one. Now they don't have to be perfect, they can be wobbly. And again, if you have any thoughts popping in your mind that's not to do with trees or painting, um, acknowledge them and bring your attention back. So we have to gradually start to disguise this Y shape and I'm going to just off the center of this Y I'm going to paint another capital Y shape. Your tree will start to grow exponentially if you're not careful. So we have to make sure that the bases of each branch are sturdy enough in case the wind blows. Because we don't want them to snap. And the poor little squirrel will lose his house. We can't have that. And then to each of those arms, we're going to add two more V shapes. And I think for my tree, I'm going to add another Y. And it's okay for your branches to cross over. To get a natural tree, you want them to overlap. Branches aren't polite. Each branch wants to vie for sunlight and nutrition, so they're all fighting for the same space. So we have something that almost looks like a tree already. I need to just thicken that line a fraction. Yeah, that's better. And the process continues. So on each Y branch we'll add two more lines and you can brushing away is going to be the easier option but you may find it easier to brush down but we don't want any pressure we want very thin lines and it's okay for each branch to overlap brush back in the paint, roll it around to charge it up. Keep it nice and fluid. I think I'm going to add another branch on the side of each of these. So another Y there and to that I'll add another Y so we're bringing it out we want to try and think of the structure of a tree in that we don't want each branch to be exactly the same height and shape so sometimes um, and if we're not mindful, actually that is what will happen. We'll repeat the same shape every single time. So I'll do a branch on this side that is wobbly and wonky. And I'll add a few more wonky branches in a minute. So as we run out of paint, I'm going to add a little bit more water to it. Just to some of the paint. So I'm going to pull out a little bit off my tile and just add a little bit more water. 
and this will make the colour more dilute and this will be great for adding in branches that will look like they're behind <coughs> the tree. So you can start to fill all of the gaps in with more branches, capital Y shapes behind and to each one add another two lines so they can go over, they can go under, they can overlap. If they look too thick, make sure that when you attach them to the branch, you thicken them up. And my trees are very runny. And that's okay. So we're starting to get a really good base for a tree. Again, keep your attention on the branches, make some thin, some thick, some wobbly some very angular and we can even begin to add much smaller shorter branches at the end so little V's and little Y's on the end of each branch And again, it's okay for them to overlap. Because a tree is three dimensional, it's all the way around. So when painting trees, it's good to remember that. You've got branches in front, behind, to the left, to the right. If it starts to look too much like a lollipop, bring out an extra branch, lengthen it a little. That one gets more of the sunlight than the other part. If you struggle to um, brush out from the body of your tree up and out, you might find one side is easier than the other depending if you're right-handed or left-handed. You can turn your tree picture upside down and then brush down towards you because um, you can see naturally I'm right-handed so I find it easier to go towards the right but if I turn that upside down I can start from the tree and brush towards the right and my branches will get thinner and nobody will know when they look at it afterwards. It's all about what works well for you. And what helps you relaxed and mindful while you're doing it. Because art is a great way to learn things and be mindful. It's a very holistic way of working. because you're fully present in what you're doing all of the time. I've added another little one. Let me turn it the right way around so you can see. Now my tree has grown massively. I think I should have put my 
uh, Y shape a lot lower down. But that's okay. Every tree is different. In fact, I have a theory that trees are like handwriting and everybody's tree is very different. Some people will do uh, curvy branches, some people will do very spaced apart branches every single time. And um, over the years, I, I, I've been able to tell who my students are, which paintings they belong to without them having to sign it just by their trees. So we'll do the very fine branches in a second with a different brush. And then we'll make the tree look a little bit more solid. But see how thin you can get that brush just with hardly any pressure. Just tickle the edge of your paper. So any thoughts that come into your mind, acknowledge them, shelve them, bring your focus back on your branches. You may ask yourself the question, Are there too, is there such a thing as too many branches? No is the answer. The more you add, the more tree-like it will become. If you, re if you don't add as many branches, it will look more like a dead tree than a, a winter tree. But again, that will be its own skill. It's hard to believe that in about three or four months, the trees will start to look like this again. But it's a good reminder of the cycle of life. And how we change throughout the year. And it's okay to accept that change. <coughs> the winter tree doesn't spend all of its time wishing it had more leaves. Um, and the summer tree doesn't wish it had its winter body back where it was much thinner. It just accepts it for what it is at that time. It's a good lesson for us. Because we change throughout the year. <coughs> Especially with the Christmas quality street. Or roses. other chocolates are available so once you've got a decent shaped tree give your brush a bit of a rinse in the water and then we're going to go with a small this this brush which I think you've got a slightly bigger one than me um, which will be the the next largest one yeah down which will be a possibly a white nylon or, or that was once a white nylon oh, I'm not going to wet this one because we're going to do something called dry brush technique to do the very fine tracery branches around the edge this is this is more of an acquired skill and I'm just going to put the dry brush into the original part of my wet paint and stab some of it off a little bit or you can dab it off on your towel and then we put the whole brush flat against the paper and bounce around the edge 
and what this does is it gives us a little bit of extra shape and finish to our branches so you don't want it too soggy if it's soggy you'll fill it in so dab it off on your bra on your cloth and then just follow the edges of the branches around in a little bouncing motion and what this does is it finishes it off because sometimes the trees could look quite clumsy not that any of yours do but I'm just saying in general this finishes the shape see that area is a little bit too wet and it's okay if your tree's gone off the page it just makes it feel more natural because if you were taking a photograph of a tree it doesn't duck to get in the frame so just bounce around where you've done your finer branches and then we'll look at making the branches a little bit more three-dimensional good trees sometimes when we're painting it's easy to be distracted by life um, but the more you can regain your focus and your attention to the task at hand a you'll enjoy it more it will mean more to you and you'll be more aware of colors and change and shape and all of that kind of thing So I'm going to use the same brush again. This time I'm going to make it a little bit wet because we want to have a bit of a light source and I want the light to come from the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stroke the wet brush down the right side of the tree, just on the main part of the trunk for now. I'll leave it for a second, wipe my brush off on my cloth and it should lift off a little bit of the colour to give us a highlight <coughs> and this is a really effective technique in the branches because at the moment all of our branches we've, we've painted sort of uh, softer ones for behind but they're all just left to right or up so we can use this method to decide which branch is in front of another so um, if I use a damp brush and follow that line That branch is facing us a little bit more than the others on that little area. I can do the same up here. So we're sort of pushing back and bringing forward. We don't need a lot of water on our brush for this. And if it doesn't lift off straight away, that's okay. We just leave it for a second and then come back so you can decide if you want a branch that looks like it's in front or behind so the one that's in front is what you want to lift out and then stroke it into the body of the larger branch that it's attached to 
and you lift out the paint and it gives you an outline on the opposite edge. It's not essential to do this when you're painting trees, but for me, it just adds an extra little bit of solidity to the branches. It just looks more three dimensional. And it saves you having to mix um, light color, a dark color, because it's all already there within the paint that we've created. So that's our winter tree. I'm going to clean my brush and then we've got a nice 20 minute slot left for a summer tree. The hour will fly by we've already used 40 minutes of it and it only feels like we sat down five minutes ago that's always a good sign right foliage next so this winter tree has given us an idea of shape and each tree and each um type of tree will have its own shape like a, a sycamore tree um, tends to be much more uh, longer and thinner whereas an oak tree tends to be more um, spreading and um, weeping willows obviously fall and cascade um, other trees might look like a vase um, some will look more rounded so we go back with our big brush and we're going to have a lot of yellow on our tile and a little bit of blue. I have not got lots of water on here. It's um, just wet enough and we're after a colour that might resemble mushy peas. So this is the lemon yellow and the ultramarine. mushy peas not particularly a fan of mushy peas but it's a good descriptive colour for what we're after so not too blue at the moment it's still more to the yellow and you can see I'm stabbing the brush into the paint so it will splay my bristles and create prongs because that's what we're going to need it won't ruin your brush so don't worry and we're going to just stab and we're going to create a very wonky oval so don't stab too heavily around the edge and what might help is if you twist your brush with each stab so it doesn't repeat the same shape everywhere but we want it to be extremely wonky which is actually harder to create than you think because we're not very good at wonky and random okay oh, something something like that'll do I can fill it in a little bit more in the middle and that's okay so this is a full summer tree this is what the trees are like if we were out in People's Park today, although we would need an umbrella after months of relentless heat. We're finally getting the joy of a thunderstorm. While that shape is drying I'm going to add a little bit more blue into my mix and if it looks a little bit too emerald you can add a pinhead of brown to dull it down still stabbing And 
side, I think it would be useful to have the right hand side as the lighter side. So we want to keep our yellow. So when we think of trees, each branch is reaching out. And if each one is reaching out, there's going to be one that's slightly underneath or in its shadow. So it's not just a matter of having one side of the tree light and one side of the tree dark. It's about thinking of which branch would be forward catching the light and the shape underneath. We'll start just gently tapping even more gently on the left side. But maybe thinking of some extra bits of gaps within the tree itself. We will go darker than this. Think of little clumps and clusters of branches. Because with a summer tree, we can't paint all of the branches first because you can't see them. and they would show through in a painting and with we want it to fairly resemble I suppose we want this to look like a green sponge at the moment So this shading would suffice if it was a day like today where it's a very grey light but we want to make it a little bit more intense. So I'm going to add more blue to my green mix. Quite a lot of blue, not any more water particularly but more blue and then I'm going to add more brown. So it goes a very dark, greeny, browny, grey colour. Still stab. And I'm going to reserve this even more for the very dark edges of the tree. So the very far left hand side and possibly underneath but again I'm twisting my brush so it doesn't repeat the same pattern over and over I might put a little dark bit in the middle It's very easy to get extremely carried away, but good, good practice. Let me clean my brush. So we've just got a floating green sponge at the moment. So as you walk around your day today after this session, look at the trees wherever you are and try and look at the shapes and the colour and uh, the branches if you can. And you'll see how you've got definite clumps and clusters of foliage. So now we want to go with the uh, the second brush that we've been using and I need to make a slightly uh, less dilute tree colour. And as long as you mix the three colours together to make that sludgy browny greeny grey, you're all right. You could mix the green first and add brown to it, or you could mix a a browny grey from the blue and the brown and add yellow to it. It doesn't really matter. 
but you will find that the sequence you do it will give you different tones each time. So mine's darker because there is less water with watercolour. If you want to lighten a colour, you increase the amount of water. If you want to keep a colour darker, you decrease the amount of water, but you still need enough water for it to flow. So I'm actually going to give it a lollipop stick at the minute. Just a lollipop stick. And then I'm going to widen it a little and flick out the bottom. And you can make it as wide as you want, but I wouldn't go too mad. You can extend some of the, the root systems if you wanted to. And it, look, it looks a little bit too much like a standard lamp or a, a Tiffany lamp at the moment. So we want to add, I'm going to add a, a slightly smaller branch coming off into that green, maybe there. And another one can be lower down. So it goes and disappears. If you think of that Y shape from earlier on. occasionally you will see a few little lines within your tree or if you've got a large area where you've got gaps within your tree you can just put a little V or a little line or a little dash so it feels like your branches are coming out through the tree, holding on to the leaves. So if you've got gaps in your stabbing, that is perfectly fine and it will give you a little indication where you've got branches. You've got the winter tree as a guide to help you know if it should be perhaps a thicker branch in the gaps as it gets in towards the center of the tree and thinner branches to hold the very fine leaves at the edge. bit of a clean and then we'll add a bit of uh, lifting out again on the trunk with a, a clean <coughs> damp brush in a second so we'll give my brush a bit of a clean dab off any excess and because this is a stronger color for me it's not going to lift off straight away so I'll just let that soak in for a second clean and dry my brush Just a magical way of creating three-dimensional looks without having to worry about trying to make a colour lighter or darker, which is always quite tricky.
have to say I'm extremely impressed with the trees in here. They look very tree-like, which is... <laughs> tree ish yes, which is what we're after. But do you know, they're all totally different shaped trees, which I, that's what I love. I think we should put a little bit of grass maybe under this one. I've got my very dark green. I'm going to just use my small brush to start with. And I'll put a little bit of grass. It's, it's going to hit and miss because it's a sketch, so that's fine. Um, the darker green is good because it gives me that bit of shadow if I brush towards the left. And I can always add more yellow back to the mixture so I can do brighter green to the front and to the side. And it just sits the tree on the paper. We ought to do a little bit of snow on the other tree. Just so we can settle that into the ground as well. And again, if you get any random thoughts, just acknowledge them, shelve them, and get back to painting grass and leaves. The snow may be a little bit trickier, but it's basically blue and a tiny, tiny bit of brown and a lot of water. You might find the brown is very hungry colour. So um, you might need to add a little bit more blue. So you're after a very blue-grey tone, but with a lot of water. And for that, I am just going to put a blue-grey line to the left again, and then maybe just a few little dabs. To make it feel like we're in snow. So blue and brown. Do you need a bit? Do you need another tile, or are you oh, all right? <laughs> You're all right. Okay. It's very easy to use the tile up very quickly, and that's okay. So give your brushes a little bit of a clean in your water jar, it's all part of the process. And then we'll finish how we started with nice three big breaths. So a nice deep breath in. And out. in and out and 
and in once more. And out. I hope you've enjoyed this morning and found it useful on many levels to calm you, soothe you and to learn trees. It's a nice way to start the morning, isn't it? Um, yeah, you've got an art class with me this afternoon now, haven't you? So uh, thank you very much, everybody. Um, have a wonderful afternoon. Try and take the mindfulness and the focus uh, with you wherever you go today. Just try and make a, a note to be more mindful and present at whatever you do, whether that's making a sandwich or reading a book. Try not to let external distractions move you away from uh, the task at hand. And equally, <clears throat> take a look at the shapes of the foliage of trees and see the different shapes and patterns of each tree as you go about your day. So thank you very much, everybody. Have a wonderful week. Look after yourselves. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.